Hello Church. I want to bring a character to you tonight by the name of Caleb. Who is Caleb? Well, when Israel arrived at the threshold of Canaan, Moses sent 12 spies to survey the land, one from each of the 12 tribes. God had promised them a good land, prosperity, wealth, a good life, and the land exceeded expectations. Well, God's like that. One thing daunted them, the inhabitants. They were taller, stronger, superior. They felt afraid, discouraged and inadequate. They were looking at the problem, forgetting the power of the one who had promised. Well, when the spies came back to report to Moses, they brought back two reports. There was the minority report of two spies, Joshua and Caleb. They said, it's a great land. We've got a big God. Let's go for it. We can do it. But the other ten brought back the majority report. They just said, forget it. The land is great, but we'll never possess it. The people are too strong. God was appalled at their unbelief and cowardice. Back to wandering through the wilderness. Fast forward 45 years. All the original adults who left Egypt are now dead, including Moses. Of the 12 spies, only two are still alive. Joshua and Caleb. Joshua is now the leader and he's engaged in apportioning the land to the tribes and their families. Caleb, the other spy from the tribe of Judah, has cherished a promise in his heart for all those 45 years. It has sustained him and kept him pressing on. God said the land that he saw and walked on would be his one day and he intended to have it. Caleb, the name, means one who yelps, or a dog. And the idea is really of so unforceable. This dog was going to yelp for what was promised to him. God loves determination. The kingdom of God is not for the wet and pathetic. Jesus said, violent men take it by force. Men and women who stand their ground with God and prove themselves to have vision, faith and tenacity. In other words, people like Caleb. Because Caleb saw and believed, God made him a promise. What you've seen and walked on will be yours. Caleb had the title deed. He was not letting go until he got the land. Our title deed, I guess, is the Bible. Full of promises from God. And we need to make sure we understand what they are and what is appropriate to our situation, and to hold on with God for it. Anyway, so far so good, Caleb. The day came, though, when that was not enough. Joshua led the tribes across the Jordan into the land. Jericho fell before them, and then Ai, after an initial setback. As cities fell and land was taken, Joshua apportioned territories to the different families and tribes, and Caleb knew now was the time to speak up and stake his claim for what had been promised him. This is what Joshua 14 verse 7 says. This is Caleb speaking now. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to spy out the land. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot has trodden shall be an inheritance for you and your children forever, because you wholly followed the Lord my God. I am still as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. My strength now is as my strength was then for war and for going and coming. Incidentally, he's now 85 years of age. <laughs> Some character. So now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard on that day how the Anakim, they were the giants, were there with great fortified cities. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall drive them out just as the Lord had said. Then Joshua blessed him and he gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for an inheritance. You see, God promises, but we need to claim. God says you can have it, but you'll have to shift the folk over there already. <laughs> and then it's yours. 
Faith is active as opposed to passive. Faith reaches out to receive. It asserts its claim on what is promised. Faith reminds God of his word, holds him to deliver what he said he would. It's not faith to say, if God wants me to have it, I'll receive it. Faith discovers what God wills and has promised and then pursues it unrelentingly. And God loves that attitude. The Bible says, those who call on the Lord shall be saved. A drowning man doesn't call sweetly and gently, please save me. He yells with desperate passion, desperate passion, help, <laughs> I'm drowning, help me. Just like Bartimaeus did. Jesus said to him, what do you want Bartimaeus? Speak it out man, <laughs> he loves to hear you articulate your requests. So Caleb reminded Joshua that he'd received a promise and Joshua gave him the go ahead to get it. Caleb asked for the right to throw the Canaanites off his patch and then to possess it for himself. The enemy was on his inheritance. All he wanted to know was that it was okay to throw the enemy off. The claim is only the beginning. Next comes the business of taking possession. Here's a salvation promise in John chapter 1 verse 12. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. There's more to being a Christian than just a few brain cells in your head being rearranged. Yes, they might need rearranging, but actions must follow words and ideas. There's the promise, now come and claim it, then possess it. So, question for you and for me tonight. Are you a Caleb? Or are you prepared to settle for less? It takes faith, courage, effort to pursue God. Ten spies thought it wasn't worth the effort. Caleb would not be so easily satisfied. Will you cry out? Will you yelp for what God has promised? Will you make it your resolute aim to possess what God has for you to possess? Caleb had such faith. And what's more, he passed it on to his daughter. Isn't it great when you can inspire your children to go for it as well in God? Judges chapter 1 verse 12, uh, Caleb said, He who attacks Kiriath Sefer and captures it, I'll give him Aksar, my daughter, for a wife. Perhaps she was a good looker and he knew that people would be up for it. And Othniel, Caleb's younger brother, captured it and gave him, and he gave him Aksar, his daughter, for a wife. When she came to him, she urged him to ask her father for a field. And she dismounted from her donkey and Caleb said to her, What do you want? And she said to him, Give me a blessing. Since you have set me in the land of the Negeb, give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. So maybe it was part of the dowry, this land that was being given to, uh, to, to, to Aksar. Uh, but she says... It's a barren, dry old place that, that, that I've got. I want more. I want more than this. I want water as well. What good to me is a desert? Let me have water also. You know, God loves the Oliver Twists who ask for more. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 24, this is what God has to say of Caleb. My servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land into which he went, and his descendants shall possess it. Will you be one, such a one as Caleb, someone of a different spirit who will press on forcefully with God to take all the inheritance that God has got for you? Amen. I hope we'll all be like that. God bless you.